guys, it's Jack. Today's video is on ionic bonding formulas and names. So welcome to Chemistry 11, which is kind of like the first part of general chemistry anywhere else. I'm Mr. Bonin, and we're coming to you live and uh, in person on YouTube from beautiful uh, Vancouver, BC. Uh, just so you get a sense of context, here on the first day in the first lesson of Chemistry 11, we're going to learn about ionic compounds. So typically, ionic compounds are made of a metal ion, or a metal atom, I should say, like this one, sodium, for instance, and a non-metal atom, like this one, fluorine, for instance. Now, fluorine, you see, has seven valence electrons. Sodium has one. In the tug of war, sodium loses, and fluorine gets sodium's electron. Now it has eight, and a valence shell that's complete. The resulting atoms now become ions. You can see them here with an electrostatic attraction between them. That's from Coulomb's law. Of course, once they're joined together this way, this thing now becomes a compound. We call that sodium fluoride. So, for instance, let's see lithium metal, and let's have it react with chlorine gas. What will happen? So lithium, chlorine gas, they react to form lithium chloride. Note there's two chlorines there, so we need to balance the equation this way. That's good, it's all done. And the conservation of mass law, that's what requires us to balance chemical equations like this. So it's all balanced, and the conservation of mass law is satisfied. For instance, let's look at what happens when solid aluminum and oxygen gas react. Aluminum has a plus three charge, oxygen minus two. So you need two of one and three of the other to make that balanced charge on one formula unit. Al2O3 is what's made. So there's aluminum oxide and the compound before was lithium chloride. Okay, so how about polyatomic ions like nitrate, phosphate, ammonium, etc.? Well, here's the trick. Just treat them like any other metal or non-metal ion and you'll be just fine. Here's an example. How about we make the compound potassium phosphate? Phosphate is a minus three charge, potassium is plus one. You'll need three of those potassiums. Therefore, put a three and you're done. Hey, look, you know, there's another thing that people get freaked out about. It's multivalent metals. Are they scary? They don't have to be. Look, multi means many and valence means many stable electron valence shell configurations. So there's more than one the valence configuration. So for instance, let's look at iron two oxide. It's made of iron and oxygen, a plus two charge in the iron. Oxygen's got a diatomic molecule there, so we'll need to do some balancing. A little two here, a two there. And uh, actually we'll have to go back and fix that one. When you look at the iron three oxide, there's iron plus three, Oxygen's got a minus two charge, there's two of those. You'll need two of the iron plus threes and three of the oxygens at minus two. Look at this, two plus threes is plus six, three minus twos, negative six. That's a net charge of zero. Notice, just have a look. You get Fe2O3, two of them there, six of them, just be careful you balance properly, and four irons are needed. So how about going from a formula to a name or a reaction? You can do it. For example, let's look at V2O5. It's vanadium oxide. But which vanadium ion is it? Oxygen has a minus two charge, there's five of them for a total of negative 10. And two watts will give you the plus 10 charge you need. Must be five. This is vanadium five oxide. Just say vanadium five oxide and put that Roman numeral V there for the five. So that's it. That's just it for now anyway. That's it for our introductory review. Have a look at the next two videos in my Chem 11 playlist, and we'll see you soon. Have a look at the next two videos in this playlist, and stay tuned for our next lesson in Chemistry 11, Lesson 2, Bonding and Covalent Compounds. This is my dad's YouTube channel. It's awesome. So like, comment, and subscribe!